The Cartesian plane, guys, is basically two axes, so two number lines. I'll show you now exactly how it looks that intersect. So if you can draw like a straight line going down, a vertical line. And then we're going to draw a horizontal line that cuts through this vertical line. All right, guys, we are going to put labels on here and just see exactly what we're going to do. But basically, each of these lines, right, both of them, they're actually number lines. So, this horizontal line, I think you guys know what a number line looks like, right? You have negative values, you have a zero, and then you have positive values. So guys, here where the two, we call these axes, all right, I'm on the side just now, where the two axes cross, where they intersect, please put a zero around that point. And what this zero indicates is showing that this line here is zero on the horizontal number line, and it's also zero on the vertical number line. So to the left of zero, we have negative numbers, right? Do we agree with that? Zero and then going into the negatives. So this one is going to be negative one, and that one is going to be negative two. If you line it longer, you can carry on. Okay, you can label the next numbers as well, so like negative three, negative four, negative five, so the following ways. And on the right of zero, we're going to have positive one, positive two, and so on. So guys, those aren't the final numbers, right? You can still go to three, four, five, and seven, eight, and so on. So we're going to put an arrow on the end of that number line. And that's what we do when we draw a normal number line as well, right? We have an arrow to show that the numbers are going on. And on the other side, we also have to put an arrow. Just to show that the numbers don't end at negative two and two. You can have more numbers. Okay. Okay, so this guy, the horizontal axis, the horizontal line, we call that the x axis. So just put an x next to it. All right, so this, the horizontal line. is the x-axis. And that will never change, guys. Right? The horizontal one is always going to be the x-axis. <coughs> now, for the vertical line, I want us also to put arrows at the top and the bottom. The vertical line is also a number line, but we're just reading the numbers like this. Okay, so we have zero in the middle. And then what do you think is going to be above zero? One, right? Positive numbers are going to be above zero, and negative numbers are going to be below zero. Okay, so again, depending on how long you make your axis, you can pull in your numbers. So above zero, I'm going to have one, and I'm going to have two, and then below, I'm going to have negative one and negative two. But if your line is longer, then just carry on with your numbers. And right, the vertical axis is called the y axis. So please put a y next to that arrow there. And that will also never change. That is always going to be the y-axis. So the vertical line is the y-axis. Right, so 
guys, what we're going to do to continue the playing for is we are going to clock points on this play, right? So I want you, please, on your number line, if you're looking at your x-axis, go to two on the x-axis, all right? Just kind of hover your pen or your pencil there over the two. And then you're going to go up by one unit so that it's in line with one on the y-axis, okay? Just plot a point there. So that point has to be directly above two and right next to one. Now, guys, next to this point, please, in brackets, and if you were here last time, then you would have seen how we write for ordinance, right? If you were here on the last day. What we do to basically communicate where this point is, is it exactly, is we first write an x value of the point. So if we're looking at the x axis, it's directly in line with two, right? Do we agree with that? So first, we're going to write two. Then you use a semicolon. And then you're going to write the y value of that point. So this point is directly next to a y value, right? We're looking on the y axis of one. So that would be the point, the coordinate of the point. Instead of we have an x coordinate of two and a y coordinate of one. Okay, so just here I'm going to just write a little note on coordinates. And this is very important, guys. You always have to write it like this. A bracket, you put the x value, then you go on, you put the y value, and then you close your bracket. But if you don't put those brackets there, you're going to lose them all. Okay, so it has to always be written like this. In brackets, x first and then y. And that's how it works in the alphabet as well, right? It's x, y, z. So x comes before y in alphabet as well. All right, so it's that same order. And this is what we're going to practice a lot today, is where we're going to give you a coordinate and the plot. Okay, so by the end of today, we'll see you in the video. All right, guys, I quickly want us to plot another point here on your picture. All right, I'm going to say it and then just see if you can maybe do it on your own first. I would like you to plot the point negative one and two. Negative one and two. Okay, that is the one that you're doing now. Negative one and two. See if you can do that one on your own. If not, don't trace. Like I said, we're going to practice loads of these today. So negative one is the x value. Is that correct? X always first, right? And two is the y value. So you need to plot a point that is basically where those two values like line up, where they match up. So the point has to be directly in line with negative one on the x-axis and two on the y-axis. I'm going to give you guys 30 seconds, see if you can do that one. Yeah. Okay, let's see. Negative one on the x axis. So, guys, it, it's helpful if you do this in the way that I did. You just kind of hover your pen or your pencil over negative one on the x axis. But now it has to be in line with two on the y axis, right? So, you go up to two. And that is where you plot your point. Okay, if you read that all to say it's directly in line with negative one on the x axis and two on the y axis. Okay, and then we go and do need to just label our point. Okay, that's where you actually write the coordinates next to it before that labeling. Well, guys, you can write it anywhere next to it, right? You can write it like kind of diagonally on top, like I did, or at the bottom where it was straight. Okay, as long as it's somewhere next to that point. 
Okay, I'm going to hand out some worksheets now. And you are not all going to get the same worksheet, all right? It's going to look kind of like this. This is just one example of it. So this is a coordinate picture. What they did here is they have listed, you see how many coordinates you're going to have to plot? You see why I said by the end of today, you're hopefully going to be okay with this. All right, so they've given you, and then it's just one of nine, they're nine different ones, okay? Um, you're not going to do all nine, no space, it's just everyone is basically going to have a different one, that makes sense. All right, so you're going to plot all of these points. Now for this one, they fold in something really kind of looks like a, like a little face or something happening there. They're telling you what the first line is. So what you're going to do is you're going to plot those four points and then take a ruler and connect them with one line. Okay, does that make sense? Yeah, it's going to form a picture when you're done. Then for your next line, you're going to do one, two, three, four points again, connect those four points with a ruler. Okay. So like I said, guys, you are probably not going to take one as a person sitting next to you. And I do have some Now, but you know when you go into the war, you may have them on. 